Hi folks. Uh, this is going to be a review and a partial demonstration of this item. This is a 5-in-1 uh, portable power pack that I bought at Harbor Freight. And uh, I think it's a worthwhile thing to have, I really do. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's got uh, an air compressor in it, plus uh, an LED light. It's got, uh, right here, it's got two uh, cigarette lighter type DC power outlets. And on the back, it's got two 110 volt uh, power outlets. So you can power uh, TV, radio, computer, and uh, all kinds of good stuff. And, you know, of course, it's also it's also got a a jumper on it so that you can jump start a car and those are the basic features for it uh, and I, I read reviews on this before I, I bought it and I read not reviews for only just this one but a whole bunch of them and uh, you know it got fairly decent reviews uh, some people didn't like it uh, I think that some people weren't charging it up properly to start with, but um, one of the drawbacks for it is that these, these clamps on the jumper uh, are plastic, and some people have said that they've uh, replaced those with, with metal clamps, and that's probably a good idea, but I'm not going to do that until they break, uh, if they break. I'm going to, I plan on being careful with them, but... Uh, I think it's a pretty good thing. Now, I bought mine for $80. Uh, normally, they're supposed to be $129, but they always seem to be on sale for $99, and then I had a 20% off coupon, so I got it for $80 bucks plus tax, and I think that's a, a reasonable deal. And when you first get it, uh, if the, you need you need to charge it up first. Now it does come with a charge on that battery, but they they say you need to charge it. And they say 48 hours for if you're using the AC charger, and 12 hours if you're using the DC charger. Uh, it's got a a charging jack which is right here, and then it also has this battery status button you can push to see what kind of power you got on your battery. Uh, right now I have uh, a little bit over 13 volts. So anyway, I, I did charge it up and uh, now we're going to test it. So for the lucky few of you who have never had a flat tire, uh, this is what they look like. That is a flat tire. And uh, we're going nowhere with this flat tire. Now I'm going to connect this up and turn it on and I'm going to see how long it takes to fill that tire up. The instructions say that if it shuts, if the tire inflator shuts off while you're filling your tire, you're supposed to let it cool down for 10 minutes before you start it up again or you could damage it. So keeping that in mind, uh, we're going to see how long it takes to do this. Uh, it just so happens it's exactly 4 o'clock right now. So I'm going to turn this on and we'll see how long it takes. So here it is now, about 20 minutes later. And this big tire is completely inflated and it didn't shut off now the temperature outside here right now uh, is only about uh, probably about 68 degrees so if it was a, a real hot day uh, I guess there is some potential that thing could shut off before it was uh, finished and then you'd need to let it cool down and then put it back on so you don't damage it but uh, in this case, uh, it just filled it straight up. It did take a while, 20 minutes, but 
uh, 20 minutes is not too bad for a big tire like this. Uh, I probably, on a small sedan, I probably could have filled my tire in, in under 10 minutes. Now I just want to check the battery and see what happens here. And that's under 13 volts now. That's uh, it's not 13 anymore, and it was slightly over 13. That's just from running this uh, tire inflator for 20 minutes. It dropped that battery down. Now next, I'm going to uh, try the uh, try the 110 volt part of it and see how long I can run some stuff off of it but uh, you know so far I'm, I'm happy with it forgot to mention one thing uh, I weighed this and it weighs about uh, 18 pounds and all those black parts you see on there are they're rubber rubberized so it has a rubber coating on the outside which is uh, nice it makes it a little bit more uh, bounceable if you bounce it onto a, a wall or on the on the ground a little bit it it won't uh, break the plastic because you know the cover here is plastic obviously and it makes carrying it a little bit better too. Now here what you see is I'm um, using the uh, the the AC power portion of it and the power inverter is on and it's got that fan going whenever that inverter is on apparently that fan runs uh, on this particular unit and uh, I'm powering right now I'm powering three compact fluorescents so I'm getting pretty good light with it now I've got this 4.5 amp uh, electric drill plugged into it and when I Turn it on. Those lights do flicker, but everything stays on. It hasn't blown any fuses or anything. So uh, now it has a replaceable fuse too. I should mention that uh, it's right here. And uh, I'm just going to leave this on now for a while. Uh, now, I'm going to go pick up my kid. Right now, it's about 4.30. I'm going to leave it on for a while before I leave. Uh, I'll go pick up my kid at 5, and then I'll come back, and we'll see what happens. Now, it's supposed to be that if the battery gets low, this thing will shut down and then it won't damage anything but uh, I don't think that I'm going to leave this on now for about an hour and a half and then I'll pick up Janine and by the time I get back here it should be about a quarter to six and I think it should stay on at least that long uh, I can't see why it wouldn't, but we'll find out. So now, um, this has been on for an hour and a half. Uh, now, of course, three compact fluorescents is a lot more than I'd have on if I was 
relying on this for an emergency power supply. So I'm going to turn off two of them and only leave that one on. Uh, now I am going to plug in my laptop. Now I am going to tell you that the uh, the instructions that come with it don't uh, encourage plugging in sensitive electronics like laptops and stuff but I'm going to do it anyway I have an old laptop that I'm going to plug in and we'll see what happens so here's the laptop coming on now uh, when I first turned it on the light did flicker a bit so probably the smart thing to do would be to use a surge protector if you're going to plug in laptops and things like that with it and there it is the computer came on so that's really about the limit of this experiment uh, I'm not gonna bother to leave it on until until the battery dies I don't think that'd be the best thing to do uh, I think that it shows that it'll power some basic things and it'll fill a even a truck tire now of course I didn't check the the jumping uh, you know the, to jump a, a, a dead battery uh, I don't have a, a car with a dead battery in order to check that but everything seems to be working okay so I think this is a worthy a worthwhile thing to get uh, and have now when you get it they they say to charge it up right away and then once a month thereafter it's supposed to be charged once once per month uh, even if it's unused so there's something to remember and there also ought to, I ought to mention that you cannot if you overcharge this you're gonna have a problem so when you first get it it's 48 hours and then after that the uh, the maximum that you're supposed to charge it for is 34 hours but you need to keep your eye on that battery gauge when you're doing that uh, because if you overcharge it you wreck the battery so that's about it uh, I think this is a, a good thing to have and I'm not sure how to uh, rate it exactly. Uh, it seems to do everything that it's supposed to do. And that's what I need it for. Uh, it will not, it doesn't have a USB charger on it, but you can buy an adapter in order to, to use, you know, the USB charger. So that's about it. Thanks for watching.